meter off, apparently. They send somebody out to pull the smart meter off the house and put a different kind of meter back on the house. So that $87 truck check. And then pay $15 a month forever. Or until next year when they decide that 15 isn't enough and they're going to 22, but whatever. <laughs> no. So it's a perpetual charge. It's very significant. For a lot of folks, that means uh, $180 a year the first year, $267, and then $180 a year thereafter, or, or until they increase it. That's a lot of money to opt out. It will be enough to discourage most folks, which we think is exactly the intention. We think the purpose of these charges is not so much to recoup these costs as it is to penalize and discourage people from opting out because they want everybody in the program. So we are hiding this. Okay, we had just went through a series of hearings in Lansing on Detroit Edison's proposal. And I was up there along with a number of, uh, of people in our group. Uh, we had nine interveners that registered to intervene in this proceeding, and they were up there testifying, uh, cross-examining Detroit Edison's witness and the witness for the Public Service Commission. And there's going to be a decision coming down on this in May on this one. My understanding is Consumers has also made a similar proposal for a slightly lower amount. I think it's 60 some dollars up front and 12 dollars a month or something like that. And they're going to handle that as part of a general rate case rather than having a separate proceeding just to deal with that. Um, what we say is, first of all, the problem with the proposal that Detroit Edison has, they're not even going to let people have analog meters. They're not going to let them keep them if they still got them. They're not going to let them have them back. Uh, what they're proposing is everybody will get a smart meter, even though that was the thing that created all the fear in the first place and it caused 24 city governments to say no. Yet, they're going to make everybody have a smart meter. The only difference is if you, in an opt out program, they will turn off the radio transmitter. Well, as I tried to show earlier, and I know that Diana covered in her presentation, when you turn off the radio transmitter, that only takes care of half the problem. The other half is that dirty electricity, those harmonics. When I showed the slide with the 60 cycle and the green and all the little red noise <coughs> superimposed, that's the dirty electricity. You're still going to get that. If you have a smart meter with the radio transmitter turned off, you still get that noise. And We've seen a lot of evidence that that kind of noise is what causes malfunctions in medical equipment and causes some of the health symptoms that are being reported by electrosensitive people. So we said that's not acceptable. You can't make people take a smart meter with a radio turn off. You have to, if they're going to opt out, you're gonna, then they should be able to have an analog meter. They should be able to keep it if they still got it or get it back if they're in the opt out program. The other thing is we say there shouldn't be any opt out. How can you charge people fees to exercise the constitutional right? This is the Fourth Amendment issue. Should you pay a fee to defend your Fourth Amendment from privacy intrusion? There's a Fifth Amendment issue here. It's the fifth, the, everybody's Fifth Amendment is thinking about the, you know, people pleading the Fifth because they, they don't want to defend themselves. But there's a lot more to the Fifth Amendment. There's a takings clause also sometimes known as the eminent domain clause, which says the government cannot take your property without just compensation. Well, this is a taking. We see this as a taking. They're taking people's health. They're affecting the, the value of their property. They thought they had a home where they could live comfortably. All of a sudden, they can't sleep in their own home. That's a taking under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. You cannot charge people a fee to avoid a taking. Uh, we think that fees, any kind of fee, is unconstitutional. Consumers is also proposing fees, as I mentioned. We think that's wrong. Um, however, uh, so we're fighting, we're fighting to keep analog meters, we're fighting to not have fees. But however, if they're going to have fees, we think they could be a lot more reasonable. Um, Mr. Erickson, representing the State Attorney General's office, cross-examined the witness for Detroit Edison, and he says, why are you insisting, you know, because half the customers still have the analog meters, he says, why are you insisting on sending somebody out to take that analog meter off the house and put on a transmitter, a smart meter that doesn't transmit, that has its radio turned on? So what do you gain from it? Do you get any more information from that than you would get by just letting them keep the analog meter? 
The witness was obliged to admit under cross-examination that there was no advantage to that. And so therefore, the Attorney General has filed a brief now stating that people should simply be allowed to keep their analog meters. If they're opting out, they should be allowed to keep their analog meters. Therefore, the $87 charge up front is not supported. $62 of that was the cost to send a man out to put a meter on and put it on in the first place. The Attorney General says that's not right. So at most, there would be maybe a $20 up front charge under his reasoning. The other thing is the monthly cost. The $15 a month that they want to charge, or in consumer's case, $12 a month, most of that is for the monthly meter readings. Now, the witness from Detroit Edison was asked under cross-examination, why do you have to keep on reading the meters once a month? There's already a regulation, a state regulation, that says people can read their own meters and report the results. And the witness says, well, because we want to read them every month. Basically, that's what he said. We want to do it every month. There's nothing in the regulation that says we can't do it every month. So we want to do it every month. Therefore, we're going to charge $15 a month so we can keep on. Because this is not mass meter reading anymore. What they're doing now, you know, as long as everybody had analog meters, it was cheap to read the meters. They figured out it only cost about 45 cents per meter to get a meter read every month. Because they go from house to house to house. They just work their way down the street. And it only takes a few minutes per house. And they figure it costs 45 cents a meter to get those readings. Well, now, there's not going to be any mass reading anymore. They figure only a small percentage of the population is going to opt out. And they're going to have to do what they call special meter reading. This means that they have to specially send somebody out to isolated locations here and over there and over there. And they're not all going to be in the same neighborhood or the same street. They're going to be scattered off the shelter. They're going to have to send people out to get these individual readings. Now they say it's going to cost us $8 per reading instead of 45 cents a reading. Well, given that, and given that people can read their own meters and report their own readings, what is the justification to charge $8 a month for reading? None. I mean, they could send somebody out to audit. They think you're cheating when you self-report. They could send somebody out to audit you once or twice a year. They also can go on whether your readings you're reporting are consistent with prior years' usage. It's a pretty good idea if you're reporting straightforward or not. And if you're under-reporting, they'll catch you when they send somebody out to do an audit. That's our position. They don't need to come out every month. It made sense. When your cost to do a reading was 45 cents a reading, it made sense to read every meter every month. At $8 a reading, it doesn't make sense anymore. That's our position. So where are we? We would hope that the Commission on Public Service Commission would agree with us and let people keep analog meters and charge them off that fee. We don't think that's going to really happen. That's our wish, but it won't happen. The Public Service Commission has shown us again and again and again they side with the utilities. We think they will approve the utilities' proposal maybe with a few tweaks. They may adjust the amount of the initial fee and the monthly fee, but they're going to need fees. We suspect that they will go along with the proposal that it must be a smart meter with the radio turned off and not an analog meter. So the battle won't be over in May. That will only be one milestone. Then where do we go? Then we have to appeal that decision to the Michigan Court of Appeals. And we have to continue to keep up the pressure politically through city councils, county governments. Am I getting hurt in the back? Am I coming through okay? We have to keep up the political pressure. Now, what I would like to see, and I would hope some of you would take away from this meeting, is why don't some of you form a local group? We have local groups in several different cities already on the east side. I'd like to see you guys get something started over here. That's one of the reasons we're having you sign up for the mailing list. If somebody is willing to take the ball and organize it, we'll make the mailing list available to that person so that they can contact you and see if some of you are willing to come together for an organizational meeting so you can get a group started here. Well, what would be the purpose of such a group? Go to the Muskegon City Council. Make the case that the Muskegon City Council should pass the resolution. Now, the type of resolution you want to be a little different than the 24 that we did in the past. One you want should plead with the Public Service Commission 
to allow analog meters and to allow opt-outs with no meters. Those are the two things you want to ask for. So if there's people in this room that would like to get something like that started, um, maybe somebody can see me after the meeting, uh, or we'll try to find a way to get the information to you so you could do send emails out to the people that were at the meeting and see who's interested. Okay. That would be the goal. Uh, finally, again, and I'm just about wrapping up on this and we'll go into questions and answers. <coughs> finally, again, I would encourage you, I think you, in this side of the state, you probably will not have to resort to self-help to, to change your own meter because my understanding, and Mr. McKee can maybe will comment on this, is that consumer's policy has been that they will take the meter off uh, if you really want to take it off balance. They will do that, I believe. Um, so, I think um, you won't have to do the desperate measures that we're doing on the other side of the state. But should the situation arise that you can't get the meter off the house, I would encourage you to consider self-help. With the caveat, he's a qualified electrician and get some legal advice before you do it. Uh, that's the end of my talk. Now, We can now uh, be glad to entertain any questions uh, until they chase us out. I think we've got half an hour. Mr. Sheldon, may I have just a few minutes as, and then we can yeah, vote? Maybe grab some, some uh, Q&A? All right. Make sure everybody gets my Yeah, one other thing. Um, we got this. Let me make We got a sign up last year on the club anyway. Uh, we got a couple of pages where we signed up already, but if you haven't signed, Time to do it. Can I make a statement before he goes out? Yeah. Just real quick. Um, I, I realize that we're going for the opt out, but there's a couple other things that we need to consider. These radio frequency collectors, some of these meters on people's houses are actually are collecting from multiple houses. So you might have a meter on your house that's actually collecting a hundred. Not, not on the side of the state. Not, not on the side of the state. Okay. That, that's, that's, okay. That's what we I, have in Westfield. Sir, why don't we let Mr. McKee speak for a few minutes? Thanks. Thanks. All right. Wow. Thank you all. I wasn't that uncomfortable <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> well, just say, just say a few things. Um, first and foremost, uh, I, I am Consumers Energy. I work for Consumers Energy, not the government. Consumers Energy is a 126-year-old independent, investor-owned company. We're not the government. Uh, the reason that we're installing smart meters is because they provide customer value. There are a lot of services, a lot of programs that a lot of people actually are looking forward to. Some people are actually even enthusiastic about. Let me explain what some of those are real quickly. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit of balance or logic as to why we might do what we're doing uh, for customers. Uh, the first part that I need to mention is that smart meters, the meters that we're installing, measure aggregate load total load, just like the meters that you have in your house right now. We can't tell how you're using your electricity. We can't tell where you're using your electricity. We can't tell if you're using it on a treadmill or a dishwasher. That is the aggregate load that gets sent to us for billing purposes. One of the biggest reasons why we are embracing the technology and utilizing the technology to provide more customer value to our customers is that we don't know right now when our customers are out of power unless they call us on the telephones. How many of you own smartphones? How many of you have smartphones? How many? How many? How many people consider yourselves computer savvy? A few more? All right. Not a lot of smartphone folks out there. Not a lot of computer users out there. Um, this information, uh, this aggregate information is provided for billing purposes. We don't know that, that you're out of power, our customers are out of power, if a tree falls on the line. In this day and age, in the information age, we don't know unless somebody picks up the phone and calls us and says that they're out of power. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. So right now, if you're, so right now, if you're home, if you're home in your subdivision, if you're home, if you're in your subdivision, and there are 20 people who live in the subdivision, 20 houses, and one person is home at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they call us and say they're out, we're going to send one truck. 
Or well, maybe we should send four. Did you, or five. Did you see the health, health yeah. dangers? Maybe we should see, see four or five. I didn't speak during anybody else's presentation, and you're, you're very good. So, so that's the logic behind what we're doing and why we're doing it. Let me, let me get into some of the programs. And again, this is encrypted data. This is information that we're going to collect for billing purposes, and then we're going to take that information, we're going to format it, and put it on a secure website for our customers to access. Nobody else, for individual customers. So they can pull up the web page, take a look at how they're using their electricity, create a little profile for themselves compared to another house that has three bedrooms, is 2,000 square feet, that sort of thing. And our customers can then compare their energy use to a typical home, same size. And then they can follow the pointers if they want to. They don't have to do any of this if they don't want to. Follow the pointers on the web page to determine whether or not they want to follow any of those to reduce their use, to save money and you know avoid wasted energy. So those are some of the reasons. Some of the programs we talked about with smart meters. What some of the programs would be? Select your bill date. Right now you pay your bill or you get billed for what is it, Roger? 17 days after reading. Some, yeah, something like that. So so now with the the smart meters because we're collecting that data, our customers can choose when they want to pay the bill. So they can choose a date that is convenient for them since we won't be sending out a meter reader. Air conditioning cycling, there was some chat about, um, about interrupting the service, interrupting electricity to a person's home. If a person chooses to participate in a program where they want to pay a lower rate of electricity during the entire year so that their air conditioning could be interrupted if they've enrolled in that program and only if they've enrolled in that program on peak days when electricity is more expensive or we've got tighter um, higher demand for electricity, that is a program that's out there. Same thing with dynamic pricing. People are the, the um, um, Mr. Sheldon uh, talked about um, higher costs at various times. Right now, the state of Michigan is a 25% importer of electricity on hot summer days. We don't have enough electricity in the state. We import it all the time. We get it from Canada and other states. It costs us more for that electricity. It's a higher rate of electricity when we go into the spot market to get it, and you're already paying that. Everybody already pays it. Yeah. It's already averaged out in your electric rates every month throughout the entire year. Through dynamic pricing, if a person enrolls in the program, they want to, then they can be notified so that they'll know when the prices are higher or lower so they can avoid those higher cost times with some of the discretionary use items, loading the dishwasher, running laundry. They can avoid those times, so if it's August 5th and it's 100 degrees outside and it's 2 in the afternoon, they may see, oh, it'll cost me a lot more to do my laundry now than if I wait until it cools off tonight. There are other scenarios too. Those are the, the primary, those are the primary programs uh, that we're looking at. Finally, electric and magnetic fields and RF. There's so much information there between what's a microwave and what's radio frequency. Since Marconi invented the radio, a hundred years ago, Tesla. Tesla? The Marconi. Tesla. Marconi. Marconi, the radio. Tesla. 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 So since the invention of the radio, there's been lots of lots of research done. Lots of 90 years worth of research done, and um, I, I understand that there's some information out there that would make people um, concerned. But there's also just as many studies that have been done by Lawrence Livermore Laboratories, by National Institutes of Health, lots of credible institutions that have come to the conclusion that radio frequencies, that the levels coming from smart meters do not present a health threat. So that's why Consumers Energy can move forward with this, because <laughs> number one, because we, we're providing customer service. We're providing a product to our customers and trying to improve it. A lot of people embrace technology and they want to utilize those smartphones. They want to use their computer access. They want to have access to appliances somewhere down the road that we don't even have programs for. They want to be able to control that. They embrace that. Not everybody does. And so we have in our, and you folks might be part of that, 1.33% is what we've got right now, folks who are rejecting the smart meters. And you would be part of those folks. And we have right in our brochure a number to call. 
if people want to request to, to maintain a, a meter other than a smart meter. That number is 1-888-862-2199. There's, there's, there's a whole stack of these brochures right there. And to get more information about smart meters, that's the number to call. So thanks for giving me a couple of minutes. Uh, can I, I ask like a question? Give you a quick yeah, question. absolutely. If, if Mr. Sheldon doesn't um, mind, if uh, Jim doesn't mind. I have a quick question. Yeah, you go ahead. Since we already have a power uh, energy shortage in this state, do we purchase energy from other sources? Why the hell are you closing down the mosquito plant? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the carbon emissions. Jim mentioned earlier it had to do with carbon regulations. It has nothing to do with those. It has to do with other emissions from the plant. And right now, that plant complies with every regulation to be public health and safety standards are not part of GDP. No, it's, it's because it's an older plant, and to install the equipment to meet the new standards in 2015, we just can't justify the expense. So we're building, we're looking at building a gas-fired plant. On the other side, it's a natural gas is where a lot, of, um, a lot of utility companies are going. So that generation will have to be replaced at some point. And right now, natural gas is the way to go. It's more competitive than coal. I don't know. Are yeah. those manufactured in China? That's a GE meter. It is assembled in the United States. Like many products, there are parts of it that come from around the world. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I just, got, I just had a comment. Um, my privacy and most of all my health are much more important than the inconvenience of a few hours of a power outage and, yep. and definitely more important than selecting my own building. I just want to Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're open for questions now. Um, yes, ma'am. I would like to ask him. I was at a meeting. He yeah. says they won't, don't, won't know how much we're using for this. I was at another meeting. Consumers there. I asked the question about this. If they control this, I said, then you have the right to come into my home and say, I'm using too much electricity, therefore you need to maybe buy a new refrigerator, which you'd probably tell me that, as old as mine is. Uh, <laughs> the answer was a moment of silence, and the, the gentleman from consumers said, well, we could, but we won't do that. Yeah, well, he should have chosen his words better. I will say this, we've got, a, we've got an appliance rebate program. We'll give you 50 bucks for that old refrigerator. No, put it up. You said that uh, you're going. you were only going to take an aggregate. Yeah. So then what good is it going to do me to compare my aggregate to another? another? That's right. There are some limitations. There are some limitations. So what good is it going to do me? Well, that's why you create the profile of your home, compare it to another home, and you see that maybe you're using uh, 20, 25% more electricity. Then you can look at where could that electricity be going, and then just follow those pointers. It's not specific to your appliances. How do I create a profile if all you are getting? You'll see. You'll see. All I can say is you'll see this summer. That's when it will be available. It won't be available until then. Okay. We need to keep moving on. Here. I'm sure there's a lot of people wanting to ask questions. That's how I get up over here. Well, and this was power. I called up and asked about energy, and yeah. they said that they don't do them only 30 miles out of the Grand Rapids. Where do you live? So,